Well, for our next presentation, we have our very own Kylie Lack, one of our lead technical consultants here at McTish. Kylie's going to show you how you can manage your team SharePoint and OneDrive content using Content Manager without the need for any third-party plugins. So I'll now hand on over to Kylie to get started. Thanks, Luke. I'm going to take you through the Content Manager SharePoint integration and how it all comes together. Now, what does the integration do? It allows users to use SharePoint without having to worry about doing records management. This allows the users to use SharePoint and not worry about what information they need to capture. They just complete their content type inside SharePoint, save it into a document library. That's all they need to do. It integrates Content Manager with SharePoint for records management compliance and state legislations and standards. So if you are using SharePoint and you do need to meet compliance levels, you can integrate Content Manager with SharePoint to meet those standards. It also allows the flexibility of how the users work with SharePoint itself. So they don't need to learn a second system, they just need to learn how to use SharePoint and saving their documents and editing their documents in a document library. Now with the integration, you have the CM Governance and Compliance app. This is an app that is actually added into the SharePoint app catalog that will run the integration. There are many configurations available to you with this app itself. So you can integrate it from document library to a container, or you can use a set of rules, instructions and selectors as well, which will determine what information uh, is being captured and where it should be filed into Site Content Manager. You can add the app to each site as required. It is not mandatory to put the app on every single site. You put it on the sites as you feel they need to be integrated with Content Manager and the records need to be captured. The app is initially configured in what we call the default integration site. Now this is what we would call a main site where we configure the app and when the app gets added to the other SharePoint sites, the settings can be inherited from the default site to begin with and if further configuration is required at a site level, then you can configure the app at the site level. The app can be configured differently for each of the sites if required and for a document library if it is required as well. It is a very, it's very, very flexible. Now with the app, there are four core actions. You have manage, finalize, relocate, and archive. With manage, what happens is the SharePoint documents come under the content manager control. A stub is created in Content Manager and that represents the SharePoint document. Now this is just metadata only and the electronic file stays inside the SharePoint document library. So from an end user point of view, you still see the document in its entirety in SharePoint. Now some organizations when they do this, they actually display the record number column. So it's a quick indicator that this particular document has been managed by Content Manager because there's a record number in that column. Not mandatory, just a suggestion. Also, while the document is managed, there is still full collaboration available on that SharePoint document because the electronic file is in SharePoint itself. With finalize, the document comes under the content manager control and at the same time the document is finalized. Now this allows for the preservation of the state of the SharePoint document within content manager. The stub once again is created in content manager which represents the metadata only of that SharePoint document. The record is also finalized so the edit status in content manager will display finalized. But once again, the electronic file still remains in SharePoint, so everybody can still look at that document. They just can't edit it anymore because it's now read-only. Relocate. Now with the relocate, what it does, it actually removes the electronic file from SharePoint itself and totally puts it into Content Manager. There is no evidence left inside SharePoint the, in the document library that the document ever existed. And as I mentioned, the electronic file is transferred into Content Manager. And this can be formed following a manage or a finalize action. So the relocate is one way that if you have documents that haven't been edited or used, for example, in 12 months, you can do a relocate of those documents to clean out the SharePoint document library. Down the track, you do have the option once again to expose those documents from Content Manager back into that SharePoint document library if required. And finally, we have Archive. Now this is a combination of the Manage, Finalize and Relocate and it is done in one action. So when you do an Archive, it'll manage the document, 
It'll also finalize it, making it read only, and then it'll also do that relocate action, removing it from the SharePoint document library so it's only located in Content Manager. Once again, there will be no evidence in SharePoint to say, hey, this document actually existed. In Content Manager, the edit status does display finalized, so it is read only, and the electronic file is transferred at the time the archive is performed. Now, what can these actions be applied to? Well, just about every SharePoint item, so the individual list items and documents. You can do it to multiple items and documents. You've got document sets, your folders, your lists, your libraries, and you can do it to entire sites, including all the contained content. So you have a lot of options when it comes to what these actions can be applied to. What are the benefits? Now, records management compliance with standards and legislation using SharePoint. So you're effectively making SharePoint record management compliant. There is no training required for the end user. They just use SharePoint. They don't need to know about Content Manager being integrated with the environment. The documents can automatically be captured or they can be captured based on an action. So for example, when their documents are captured automatically, the document can be saved into the document library and perhaps three hours later, they will automatically be managed unbeknown to the end user. They don't do anything, it just happens. Or you can uh, do it based on an action whereby, for example, there I've got uh, the column can change from draft to final. As soon as you change it to final, this can trigger a finalize or a manage action, for example. It can be used anywhere in SharePoint and it does work with your document libraries and teams and we do have a, a groovy way to use it with OneDrive. Now you've got the automatic versus manual option here. You do have lifetime management policies which allow for the automatic managing, for example, of those documents very easy. They can be configured so the actions happen automatically when a rule has matured and that rule could be three hours after it's been saved into the document library, Content Manager will automatically manage it. And there is no need to apply these lifetime management policies to all the sites or document libraries the app's added to. Some document libraries might be a manual management and others will be an automatic management. And you could have some document libraries whereby there's no management at all until six months after the document was last modified then you might do a finalize. So you've got a lot of options available to you with the automatic versus manual options. That, and there are some examples there. So you can manage your documents um, seven days after they were created. You can manage the document when the status field changes from a draft to approved. Or you can finalize documents six months after they were last date modified. There are many, many options when it comes to doing your management automatically or manual. Now, I'll take you through a bit of a demo of the integration so you can see how it all works. In this demo, I'm going to show you some examples of how the integration works between SharePoint and Content Manager. Now, in my first document library, you can see here, this document library has been configured for automatic management. So all I need to do is add a document into the document library. And as we can see, it's currently uploading. Once it's been uploading into the document library, there is nothing I need to do with it. You can also add documents into folders inside the SharePoint document library. And you can also do that via drag and drop if you wish. Doesn't matter how the document gets into the document library, as long as it gets in there. And as you can see here, I already have some documents that are managed by Content Manager. So for example, this D2329, I'll bring up Content Manager and we'll do a quick search. There's the document there. And as you can see, it is just a stub of the document inside Content Manager. Let's just do, move it over here. Well, you can see the electronic file is still in the document library. If I refresh my screen, document has now been managed. It's been allocated a record number. And to prove that, there he is right there. And that's the one in the folder and back in the document library directly, we can see that that document has been managed automatically as well. So it can be easy as the user just adds the document to the document library, the document gets managed. 
You can also, if required, have document libraries that need manual management. I'll just drag and drop a document into this document library here. Now, as I mentioned, this document library has been configured for manual management and all the end user needs to do is select their document if they wish this document to be managed by Content Manager and manage. It will bring up a window advising you that it is going to be managed with Content Manager, uh, what record type is going to be used and where it's going to go. Just click OK on the window. It will confirm that it has been placed into a queue. And now you can navigate back to the document library. And after a couple of minutes, you will find this guy has been managed. I just pressed F5 on my keyboard. And there you go, he has officially been managed. So you can have automatic management where the user doesn't do anything or you can have manual management and the user will actually do the manage themselves. You also have the opportunity for any documents that are in Content Manager, you can expose those documents back into the SharePoint document library. I have a selection of documents here in this document library that have been exposed and to prove that, I'll jump into Content Manager, do a search for the container and if I look at the contents of the container, I can see very easily that this D1219 here is exposed here. Now, normally when you see the electronic file in both places, is normally an indication that this is an exposure. Even though this document, these documents have been exposed, you can still edit them. However, you do need to do a formal checkout to do so. Now, that is just part of the rules when you need to edit a exposed document. So you can open this document up. And this is opened into Word Online. And you can edit it as per normal. Just close that. And eventually a job will run in the background and that particular document will be updated. Now, don't forget to check the document back in when you are finished with it. document has been checked back in. Another example of how the integration can work is it works with Microsoft Teams. With Microsoft Teams, it's just in the Files ribbon. And of course, this is the general channel. And as you can see, this has been integrated with Content Manager due to the record numbers on display. All the user has to do here is drag and drop their document in or upload their file however they wish to get their documents into the Teams channel. The document is currently uploading. As you can see, it has now been uploaded and in a couple of minutes time, that document will be managed resulting in a record number being allocated. While we're waiting for that, over here in my CM Teams documents, my Teams document here has been configured for exposure once again. Now, if we have a look for this record here, D20 slash 65 in Content Manager, we can see it has its electronic file with it in Content Manager itself. And if I just drag this over here, we can see it also has been exposed. So you can create uh, web tabs inside Teams to be able to expose documents into Teams so the users can edit them. And once again, same rules apply as in SharePoint. You do need to check the document out before you edit the document and just remember to check it back in when you're finished. Back over in my Files tab, that document I added in there before has been updated and has been given a record number and I can prove that has been managed. So we'll go and have a look in Content Manager. There it is right there. And I've also got the SharePoint URL column on display in my view pane and it actually tells me where it is sitting inside SharePoint so I can easily find it. 
So you can integrate Teams with Content Manager. So whenever you upload a document into one of the channels, the document will be managed. And as I did mention, we can integrate in a, in a roundabout way with OneDrive. Now I have my Word document here. I'm just going to put some information into it. And what I need to do, we have configured uh, our, the OneDrive. So I'll just save this into my OneDrive here. that once uh, I have put final in the name of my document, we have a flow that gets acted upon, acted upon. And what actually happens, a copy of that document I just put into my OneDrive, right here, will get moved into a specified document library using this flow. And this document library has been configured and managed with Content Manager. So I'll just navigate over into that uh, document library now. It does take a minute or so to come through. And as you can see there, that's the document I just added in. And in a couple of minutes, I'll try and refresh the screen and see if it's uh, been managed yet. There you go. It's been managed. So the integration with Content Manager and SharePoint not speci specifically designed to go into OneDrive. However, if you create a flow that f monitors the OneDrive looking for a particular word, once that document has that word in the name of it, the flow will kick off. It'll move a copy of that document into a specified document library, in my case here, my OneDrive final documents. And then that document library is configured to have its documents managed automatically by Content Manager. I hope you enjoyed that demo. Uh, if you do have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask. Back to you, Luke. Well, thank you very much, Kylie, for that demonstration. So we have a good amount of time left for the Q&A. So let's get started. Just pop your questions in the Q&A tab in the top right hand menu and Kylie will be there to respond to your queries. So thank you very much. And I'll turn my webcam off now while we run the Q&A.